stronger communities. Steve Annette, uh, Governance Officer, GMCA. Jeanette Staley, Head of Community Safety, Salford City Council and GM Police and Crime Lead Support Officer. Have we got any apologies, Steve? Uh, yes, uh, Jeanette, we've had apologies from Councillor Sharon Briggs, uh, Berry Councillor. Uh, apologies uh, from Eamon Boylan, Chief Exec. Uh, Steve Rumbelow, Chief Exec at Rochdale. And um, <coughs> I understand Councillor Kevin Anderson will be joining us, but he's just running a little late. He's at another, meter somewhat, another meeting in Manchester somewhere. Okay, and um, I'd like to move on to item two, which is the appointment of a chair for the 1920 municipal year. Does anybody have any nominations, please? And I'll second that, Jeanette, please. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other nominations for chair? Okay, would we like to take a vote on Councillor Murphy as chair for this committee for the forthcoming year? All those in favour? Hands raised. Just leave your hands up till Steve's got a note of the number. It's a unanimous decision. The only chair for a year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank we you. appoint a chair at the start of every year. Well, there's two items. Um, we only appoint a chair for one municipal year, so this happens ev every year at the start of every year, but also... Um, Councillor Tariq, who was portfolio holder, represented from Berry. There's been a cabinet reshuffle, and he's no longer the community safety portfolio, and was not nominated to sit on this panel. It was Councillor Briggs. I'm pointing at Councillor Piers there, but she's not with us today. Councillor Thank Briggs you. from Berry Council is is the nomination. So, does that explain it? Okay. Without further ado, I'll ask Councillor Murphy to take over the chair of the meeting. That's Um, thanks, Jeanette, and thanks, members, for um, giving this position for the next year. Um, I think it's worth noting, and you know, we've just covered that there has been some changes to appointments since last year, which isn't always very clear. So while we're wake well, welcoming Nadim and Sharon, um, Sharon and Amanda for their first meetings, obviously those three people replace people that served for the previous 12 months. So I think we'd like to place on record our thanks to Councillor Ayup, Councillor Tariq, and Councillor Wilson from um, Bolton Berry and Stockport. I think if we can write to them and thank them for their service over the certainly over the previous year, um, I think would be quite helpful. <laughs> so thank you for that. I think one thing that came a bit apparent last year is we don't actually technically have a vice chair for this committee. And maybe that's something we should be considering at the next meeting, having somebody that in the event that I can't make a meeting, that we've got someone automatically designated. So it makes it a bit clearer, both with this and the steering group, if members are happy with that. Okay, so I've actually done item three, I think, there, which is, is noting the new membership. Oh, I'm loving the new chair. You've already sent me two actions. Well, okay, <laughs> there we go. And I've had a request, or it's been suggested, that we could move item 13, which is the Ministry of Justice devolution agreement, up the agenda so to, uh, to facilitate officers' time, if that's okay with members. So please move, move to 13. And I'll hand straight over. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just going to take you through a bit of the journey we've been on around justice devolution in Greater Manchester. It first came about in 2015-16, along with all the momentum around devolution. However, since signing off the original agreement in July 2016, there were significant changes on the justice landscape. We had something like five secretaries of state from the Ministry of Justice in five years. Um, which made it quite an unstable environment to kind of you know, set the agenda for justice devolution. Also, some of the key aspects um, of the kind of original deal at the time were kind of put into um, status in the fact that the uh, original reform prison that was suggested at Hindley is still paused and some of the policy around secure schools is taking its time to go through. So there's a number of aspects that just didn't quite play out. So then in terms of when um, Bev came into office after the election of the mayor, one of the things that we wanted to do was genuinely test the appetite is, is it still a thing? Is it still something that we want to do in Greater Manchester? 
So we had a number of high-level discussions, both with ministers and senior officials, to really test what it meant for Greater Manchester and, uh, and apply the pressure, because there was certainly the ambition in Greater Manchester, um, but was it matched uh, from a government le uh, level? So what we are able to report today, and it's already been through the combined authorities, that we do have a justice devolution deal, and that ambition that we have is very much beginning to be matched. What you will find, though, it is very much feels like a strategic partnership. So it's not the kind of linear devolution that you would expect of, here's the thing, we're going to pass it back over. So it's more about saying what is our mutual agenda. So within the pack, you've got the um, memorandum of understanding that's now been agreed and a kind of uh, presentation. You'll see from that we have four key areas of priority that the Justice Rehabilitation Executive um, is progressing. And we came to the Police and Crime Steering Group in the autumn to kind of consult and test that and you'll see it's very similar to that original business plan for those who have seen it. But we've got four areas of priority which is youth justice transformation, smarter justice in in including family centre princ principles, reforming adult offender management and improving the victim journey. And one of the benefits of this is that they agreed those priorities. And I think that's quite significant in the fact that they said, actually, we agree with you about the kind of mutuality of, of where we want those outcomes. So we've got some key commitments uh, based on those priorities and the business plan at the Justice and Rehabilitation Executive Board. I'll just highlight a couple of them because the full detail is in your pack. Um, but for youth justice transformation, our young people are far from home. When they close down the facility at Hindley, you know, the, ma the majority of our young people in custody at Weatherby, that in itself, in terms of logistic and pathways, causes a problem. Um, one of the things we've got agreement to is, is really look now at how we have a resettlement consortium and, and better build those pathways and get over some of the basic logistics that are causing the problem. So I think that will begin to bear fruit as, as this deal progresses. Um, you know, and very much safeguarding in those institutions is really important to us. They will come back as part of our community, so it's important while they're in custody that we understand what those issues are. For smarter justice and family centre principles, um, we very much want to increase confidence in community sentences. That isn't about soft justice, that's about the right kind of justice. We've got very successful models in Greater Manchester, such as our approach to women offenders, intensive community orders. So it's building on what we've got and diverting at the right point. And there's agreement there and some further announcements will be coming out shortly around that joint piece of work with the government on that. In terms of reform of offender uh, um, management, I'll just pass around some information today um, about the, one of the benefits this de is already um, providing to Greater Manchester. Um, it was <coughs> been agreed on Friday that going forward Greater Manchester will have its own probation area and that's significant for us. It was going up to a higher level at a northwest region prior to it being a, a original model also being contracted out. So the Ministry of Justice can very much see the benefits of the model of linking into the combined authority. And I know we've had troubled times with the difficulty of the model that is in place, but you know, over this next period of transition, this is a real opportunity for us as a collective body in Greater Manchester to try and unify those services back together. Um, finally, improving the victim journey. We're already doing a strategic review of victim services in Greater Manchester, but this get, gives us a voice back in to government. Um, they'll see us as a test bed for innovative approaches. The criminal justice system is still a harsh place for many victims um, and witnesses, and we want to see that that is you know, really changed and improved. Particularly, there's a, a consultation that's due to come out um, around the criminal injuries compensation scheme that has really affected victims of the Manchester arena, arena attack, and we'll have a voice in that. So we'll also develop a, a scrutiny role to really test that the system is working for our communities in Greater Manchester. So that's a couple of headlines. Obviously, some of these are high level, and what I would say is we've had to have a singular voice in our discussions in terms of carving out this deal, but going forward, there's a real opportunity to ensure that the delivery plan that sits underneath that is collaborative. So we'll be coming to each of the districts, speaking to your reducing reoffending boards, and so if there's anywhere you need me to come to speak to, to have a look at that, that's the open offer, because that's the work that now really needs to be done to make this work properly. What we, the wider ambition is not just having the connection with government to Greater Manchester, but how that reaches back in to public service reform and our localities, and that's going to be the real challenge. So 
I'll leave it there as that. Um, it's the start of a further journey, but I think that the appetite certainly has been tested and agreed. And uh, again, you know, there's an open offer. Please contact me if you would um, like me to come speak to any of your boards, etc. I don't know if it's better for you want to say anything. Rebecca. I wouldn't just a point up. Thank you. Thank you. Just to point up a, a, a couple of things, really. I think once we found our way to the right people in the Ministry of Justice and having meetings with them and got commitment, then I have to say the Ministry of Justice, despite the at best semi-detached nature uh, before that, uh, really committed to trying to make this work and to um, get to a position where we could have a, a new agreement. They seconded um, staff up here. Uh, they were very diligent in, 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 in putting the effort in. Uh, they attend a governance board uh, that, that I chair, a joint combined authority, uh, MOJ governance board. Um, they, as we get into the detail, they accepted at the outset uh, two things, which was the, the basic um, framework of priorities that we'd already agreed on at the Justice and Rehabilitation Board. So they accepted those were the right kind of priorities to work on. And these priorities here reflect that in structure and in content. Um, but also, I think, secondly, they could see the real potential for uh, another agreement of the public sector reform agenda that Greater Manchester has, the place-based approach to multi-agency working. Mm. Um, and that's why un underneath all of the, the detailed commitments in this, um, in this agreement um, is a desire to use Greater Manchester as a testbed for trying out interventions that hopefully might be more effective and evaluating them. So, as a testbed for uh, criminal justice interventions uh, nationally. I think that's really all I want to say. The, the, the paper that um, Alison has just uh, put round to you gives it in some detail the issue we touched on before, which is the uh, separate probation area for Greater Manchester, again, which very much supports um, the agreement that we've now got with the Ministry of Justice um, to take these issues forward. So it, I think it is really, really positive. Thank you. Charlie. Can I just ask when it's going public, because I'm being pressed by officers to give a report ready for council about what we're doing in GMCA, so I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early. You're talking about sorry, the GM probation area? Yeah, um, the letter should be coming out tomorrow, so we'll circulate it, and you can use that. A joint statement's being prepared by the MPS and the CRC, and that should be issued tomorrow. Angela? Yeah, thanks. Just got a question. Um, what new models of behaviour and intervention is, is diff what's different in this and what new models are you working towards? There is an opportunity. Um, so we come across a lot of challenges in the criminal justice system. So, for example, we've got intensive community orders for males aged intensive community orders for males aged 18 to 4 to 24 in Greater Manchester already. We've come across issues about pre-sentence reports. So to be able to divert somebody at point of sentence, you need to have a pre-sentence report, and that has not been working in Greater Manchester. We're at below 50% in terms of the rate. We should, the target is 80%. So that, this gives us an in, you know, the commissioning an independent review of pre-sentence reports. So that is, although that seems quite technical, what that means is if we're looking to put other alternatives to custody in, and work with our magistrates on community reviews, we've got to have that bit of the system working first, else anything we do will just not work. So this gives us the opportunity to have a voice in and they'll come and listen to us and work with us to help fix the system. So there's that element anyway. Some of this absolutely is in our own gift and ambition. So the interventions we, we can create, such as we've just uh, agreed to be a pilot for community sentence treatment requirements. We pretty low in terms of diversion to substance misuse services that needs to change um you know it's about getting the traction in the system that we can work then collectively with our substance misuse providers to ensure that people get to the right service at the right time so it's very much about using the levers of the criminal justice system but it's got to link back into communities and services so 
get some of the work we're already doing, but it just gives us a massive advantage in terms of making sure there's consistency and sustainability of those services. Mike. Oh, thanks, Chair. I, I do think this is really positive, and it's a shame that the original memorandum of understanding didn't really, with all the changes at the Ministry of Justice, I mean, I even wrote in the report in the margin, when it says the feedback from MOJ, I said, which one lost count of them? Um, but um, I just was wondering what the marketing strategy is for all this, uh, particularly at 3.1, when we talk about um, track record of delivery across the justice system overseen by the Justice and Rehabilitation Executive, such as, how do we actually market those those matters to the general public because it's about their buy into this as well and, and the confidence you know, that, that it gives them in the, in the criminal justice system. No, that's a fair point. Um, I suppose it's something we can take away and look at. Um, certainly ab about the whole system approach to women, that has fairly wide recognition. It probably could get better. We certainly need to use your local reducing reoffending boards a little bit more, and they need a, a bit more love, if, if you like, to, because you need that local. We need that local dimension um, to understand what the needs are in each district as well. Um, in the series of announcements that there's going to be, there's a, a, very much an opportunity to have a further conversation with the public. So again, we're looking the, the potentially paper coming out on, on alternatives to custody will will be a pilot area, and. That that'll give us the need to engage with our public. We're currently in the process of we've established a reform of adult offender management board, and that can be one of the tasks that they consider is how do we get the public on side and what the public concerns are about some of this. We're also in the process of conducting GM strategic needs assessment on both offenders and victims. Part of that will need to include victim of a voice and service user. We'll also need to link to our police and crime plan because there'll already be a survey around that so it's about an iterative process of feeding back in once we understand those concerns but also doing some extra work would it be useful to prepare a short presentation for say stronger community panels across each each of the 10 districts particularly the one that i go to at trafford would benefit whether or not you actually are there to present it or it could be presented by the police commander or, or by the by the community so the the, the, the the joint chairs but i think that would be useful and we could get it on the agenda and get it out there a lot quicker Happy to do that, yeah. Got David and then Stephen. Just two quick things. I'm looking at the Youth Justice Transformation and Integrated Offer. Uh, and the opening paragraph again talks about Greater Manchester. Will this still be operating at the Greater Manchester level or will it be a operating like the probation service? At, um, just Because it talks about the North West in here. And I, I presume it's going to be Greater Manchester only. Is that correct? Yes, this is a Greater Manchester Devolution deal, and we still work with our nine youth justice services as a collective, and they come and represented. So it's, there's no, there's no kind of we've not got a Greater Manchester Youth Justice Service. We're working with those services in, in the districts, um, but there is a central policy unit. The MOJ have now taken over youth justice policy from the Youth Justice Board, so it'll be those we're working with at a governmental level. To Manchester facility. In, in the published um, document, it said North West, about the secure school you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it said, it, the published document said North West. We have an ambition and agreement that we'll look as, we're looking at the primary area for, for the North West. So Greater Manchester is the primary area for the North West. And the, the final question, just on the staffing arrangement for the probation service, if I can come back to it, you talked about the new Greater Manchester structure instead of a North West structure. How is it going to be determined which staff move where? That's not been determined yet, so that'll be part of our discussions. They've only just agreed for those areas. One thing we are very keen on is understanding um, how that will take place. And we've got agreement to have workshops with the Ministry of Justice to discuss that. So I'm happy to bring that back when we've got some further information. At ministerial level, they've just agreed the blueprint at the moment, which is the basic structure. Stephen. Cheers, no. Cheers Nigel. Thank you. 
your body language gives it away. Whatever you do, don't lo lose your enthusiasm for this because I agree with agree what everybody said. I think you've presented it really well. There's sometimes, some members sometimes think some of the authorities, don't they? Well, it's part of the combined authority of this and it's a big authority and all them's out there somewhere and we won't get a look in. But you've not said that because what you have said is, is that you're willing to come to each of those different communities at my place in Oldham, meet with some of our guys to just say, look, I can we help you with this? So I just welcome that. That's really good. Thank you. I just wanted to mention, mention we're already starting discussions on victim services. So I've just met with Trafford literally yesterday. So I'm doing it individual and victim services, but also on the reducing reoffending. So, you know, we're making sure everything's covered. OK, thanks, Alison. Thanks for the contributions. I think it, it's a huge step forward that we're actually now we're, we're engaging with the Department of Justice that's there, but also the opportunity that's going to bring forward. Certainly, when I've looked at the Weatherby situation in, in, when rep, um, remands and stuff have taken place and, and young offenders are there, it's been a huge issue, um, both for the welfare of, of the perpetrators or the, the victims that are there, but equally for the families that are actually left behind as well. I think it's how we can start to address that, which is a huge way forward. And that's just one section of it, so we can move forward in that way. I think it's got a lot to gain. I think the idea that um, Councillor Freeman had regarding trying to get something to the community safety partnerships and safer boards would be really, really useful. And as this is a public meeting, um, it's, it's public now regarding the, the work we're doing now with the probation service, which I think is really, really useful. And I think that's great. Something, again, we should be shouting about. There's something that's been delivered in Greater Manchester, and hopefully we can set the trend for elsewhere. So thank you for that report um, and for bringing that forward. I will move back now to the um, main part of the agenda. Um, so we've got item four. Um, hopefully everyone has given to Steve the uh, conduct and de annual declaration form. I think most have, Chair. I think there might just be one or two outstanding, so it's just a plea, really, if you could let me have those back uh, within 28 days. They have to be published in that time period. Thank you. Can I, yep. can I just confirm the second part of that agenda item? We, I did send to our co-opted members the, the Salford Code of Conduct, which is what they're there to adhere to. You did, you did receive it, didn't you? By email? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, brilliant, thank you. Brilliant, and then if there's anything particular regarding declarations of interest, if you can let Steve have those obviously for, the, for the meeting. Okay, so now we're going to go for the minutes of the meeting held back on the 31st of January. If anyone that was present at those meetings, are they happy to do a correct record? And any items that we're not covering, I think it was mainly on the precept, which I know we've done a lot of work and that, that was passed, I think we've all had the bills, so, so it's... Um, Quite useful on that one. Janet. Yeah, there's a massive amount of typos on page five. Uh, you know what I'm like, but I think somebody had a drink or something. If no, <laughs> seriously. Um, I, but I have I have made notes for, for you, Steve, if you want to take that. The other one was that we've already kind of touched upon this earlier, but the um, P PCP 19 stroke 07, the last thing, specific member training regarding future arrangements in respect of fire scrutiny responsibilities be arranged in due course. Can we, you know, get that clear that it is going to happen because it was postponed and moved around, etc. So it's absolutely clear what's happening with that, please. It absolutely is happening. We're waiting for some dates back from fire commanders in relation to when they might be able to facilitate that training, and then we will communicate a couple of date options to you um, before setting on a fixed date in good time, subject to me getting them in good time. So I think we've rest assured that we'll have the training in place before we get the responsibilities that FIRE will be bringing with us, I think, which is the important thing. Uh, Mike. Um, thanks, Andy. It was, again, um, typos on page four and five, but. I know uh, that Councillor Emsley is very thorough, so she's got a list to give to Steve. That'll do me. That's fine. Okay, moving on then to item seven, which is the Greater Manchester Police and Crime Panel complaints procedure. And in Liz's absence, Jeanette's going to pick this one up. I am indeed. Thank you, Chair. Um, those members that have been with us for a couple of years will be aware, and as per the induction we just gave to you a short while ago, 
Um, as a panel, you have to have a complaints procedure, um, and so the procedure is presented to you for approval today. In terms of amendments that we've made to this procedure in relation to previous years, um, we've made some minor amendments, clearing up references to the difference between a complaint that relates to the Greater Manchester Mayor versus a complaint that relates to the Greater Manchester Deputy Mayor. Um, and then the only other addition we've done is at Appendix 1, page 13 of the report, we've put a flow chart in, which hopefully um, very simply describes the process that we adhere to when dealing with complaints. Because I think um, in past years we've tried to describe that narratively in the procedural report and it's not always been that clear. So they're the two minor amendments that we've put into the report and I'm happy to take any questions before ultimately approval. Any questions on the procedure? which is this item. Are we happy to approve that? Yes. Agreed. Thank you. So now moving on to the annual record of complaints made on behalf of the Greater Manchester Police and Crime Panel. And again, I'm going to hand over to Jeanette in Carolyn's absence. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this is, um, as part of the procedure, a requirement, and again with the legislation, a requirement to produce for you a annual report, which is a summary of the register that we must keep. Um, the report, as highlighted at paragraphs 2.1 to 2.4, are the main ones. We received four complaints that met the definition of a complaint to go on the register. Um, one was in relation to the former Police and Crime Commissioner, Two were in relation to the Deputy Mayor and one was in relation to the Greater Manchester Mayor. Um, in relation to the former Police and Crime Commissioner, that complaint was not upheld. In relation to the Mayor, as per the procedure that was referred to the Greater Manchester Combined Authorities Monitoring Authority to be dealt with in accordance with the Code of Conduct. And in relation to the Greater Manchester Deputy Mayor, one was initially received, but a fuller detailed complaint form was, was never completed, and therefore we've not taken that complaint any further as per the, the procedure guidelines. And then the second complaint against the Deputy Mayor wasn't upheld. I'm happy to take any questions. Mike, and then I'll come over. Thanks, Jeanette. Do, do, um, what procedures do we follow when we send out um, a, 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 a form to be completed and it doesn't come back? Do we ever make inquiries as to why that form is not, that, that has not been returned? Do we, do we take it any further than that? I mean, could it be the person that has been sent to has got some disability, can't fill it in? Blind, you know, do you, I'm, I'm just wondering how, how far do we push to actually get that get the information in? We deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in the particular case that didn't fill it in, um, I did do recontact and he wasn't willing to complete the form. Um, he'd already sent me around 20 emails and said that should be sufficient. And I said from that we couldn't understand what the complaint specifically was and wouldn't be able to proceed. But to answer your question, we deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. And in the past, I have actually met complainants where they've felt it difficult to, to fill the form in itself. Thanks. Thank you. Roger. So just in terms of the number four, just to get an idea, is, is that about an average in compare, comparison to other areas, or is it high, low? Just to sort of feel that I've been marketing, have a complaint procedure <laughs> from, etc. Um, I've never looked into it, but um, every area has to publish complaints. Um, a, a summary like we do so I'll take an action away from the meeting to do a, a bit of googling on on panel websites and have a look at it in terms of the um, Greater Manchester and a comparison year on year um, it I would say it's slightly low to average in all honesty um, in the first couple of years we they were quite high I think it was because it was quite a new thing and people were complaining primarily about Greater Manchester Police and local authorities which we don't have a jurisdiction to look at um, and then in the last few years it, it's probably about, about average. Angela please. Okay. Are we happy to accept, accept the information that's provided in the report? Yeah. And thanks for the work done on that. Okay, I think we're going to stay with Jeanette because she's filling in for a lot of people today. She's multi multitasking, um, which is the report on the um, police and crime panel arrangements. 
Thank you, Chair. These are the formal panel arrangements. These are the arrangements that, that guide this meeting and your special functions. Um, and they are here for your approval, for you to note, actually, because the GMCA Executive Committee's um, approved them. In terms of amendments from previous years, we've made one slight arrangement, and that is that you can now nominate a substitute member to represent you on the panel should you... Um, not be able to attend. Um, members will recall that we had some difficulty in making sure we had enough members to be quorum for some precepts a, a couple of years ago, and, and so that's sought to resolve that matter. Any questions regarding that? Stephen? Just a comment, really, to go up. You all think I'm going to be in a bit daft when I say this. I just wish, Jeanette, that the general public that might be watching this, because somebody who look at this, don't they, could have seen that previous presentation because they would have had a totally different feeling about what you've just said then. We can deliver it in public in future if the chair so wishes. Maybe that's something we do look at at the next AGM, we're just actually having that brief, because it... Even someone that sat on the panel for a couple of years gave a good insight into what, yeah. what we can or what the role of the panel is. And I know possibly with our um, independent members who applied for a panel and got a bit of the history or, or the knowledge of it, it's, it was useful to actually see how it's working in action. So maybe we do look at having, because some of that could be condensed down as well, potentially for, for, for that presentation. Maybe that's something we look at for next year. I think that was quite, or maybe it should happen to people before they get appointed. But then maybe that's another. That's, that's a different. That's a different. Um, that's a different discussion. But I think it'd be useful probably to speak to your constituent authorities um, regarding alternatives. I think that's that's for elected members rather than co-opted members, unfortunately, um, as to who your alternative would be. And it'd be probably useful for Steve to have details of those of, um, in advance, or certainly if someone is standing in for you. Okay. Moving on then, again we're going to stick with him, Jeanette, is the Greater Manchester Police and Crime Rules of Procure... Um, Thank you, Chair. Again, um, a report for your approval. Um, again, an annual report that you're required to approve. These are the rules of procedure. In the preceding um, induction that we've just delivered to you, we've been through um, the majority of the rules of procedure in, in, in a bit more easy read way, um, rather than the legal speak that's in these documentations. I um, would just like, again, to point out the uh, one amendment that we've made to previous years, um, and as per the previous item, that is referenced to a substitute member so at rule 1.1 you'll now see um, in bold the addition of you, your requirement to nominate a substitute member should you not be able to attend a meeting any queries on that okay we're happy to, happy to approve yes. item 11 I'm going to hand over to Baroness Hughes on the Chief Constable's contract extension Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is a very short report, and it's to inform members of the panel um, that because the Chief Constable Ian Hopkins was on a fixed-term contract that was due to end in October this year, um, the Mayor and I had to consider uh, what we wanted to do, and uh, having had discussions with the Chief Constable um, himself, we decided to offer him a further extension to his contract for two years, um, and he has accepted, I'm pleased to say. So we will have our current Chief Constable until October 2021. Thank you. Stephen. Cheers, Nigel, thank you. Beth, whoops, not me. Beth, can you just touch it? Why is he on a fixed term contract? I should know the answer to that, perhaps, <laughs> but I don't. Um, I think nowadays most... Uh, very senior people, the top people uh, in lots of public sector organisations, not to mention the private sector, are routinely appointed on a fixed-term contract. It doesn't necessarily have to be a short fixed-term contract. The, um, this report says it was a five-year fixed-term contract. I think it was four years. Oh, it was four years. Yeah, uh, and similarly for other recent very senior appointments of the, of the chief officer level are on fixed-term contracts. Mike. Yes, thanks, Chair. I just want to say that I think, bearing in mind the transformation that Greater Manchester Police is going through, this is a very, very sensible move. And I do note that Ian, when he was here at our meeting on the preset, did say he did intend to see the reforms and, and the recruitment phases through. So it's a very sensible and the, and the right thing to do. Thank you. 
Any other comments or questions? I think, as a committee, I think we welcome that and the commitment that Ian's shown to this panel as well over the years. But certainly in the, the way the leadership has shown over the arena of TAC and, that re, um, and the restructuring of GMPs, it should be noted. I think as a panel, we pass on our, 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 our welcoming in that decision and look forward to continue working for the next two and a half years. At least. Okay, moving on, we've got the Standing Together annual report, which is from, well, it's actually annual report, it's kind of nearly two years of a report, isn't it? So I'll hand back over to Bev. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, I'd, I'd really welcome um, members' views on this draft. This is in draft. The, uh, the content, the, the, the narrative, I think, will be uh, pr pretty much stay the same, but I have asked for some further... Um, design work to be done on the first part of the report um, because I just think it looks very very dense and heavy and I want people to find it really accessible um, as you say chair it, 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 it's not so much overdue but given when we we got the standing together plan out it seems sensible to do this report um, around this time when there'd be more uh, progress to show um, and, and I think it does show that despite the many challenges that we are facing, both in terms of the increasing level and complexity uh, of crime, consequent demand on policing, and indeed all the other partners that work with the police, and in the context of uh, significantly reduced resources, um, nonetheless, both the police and partners in local communities are doing an incredibly good job uh, and moving forward, I think, very progressively. Um, what I wanted to do in this annual report in particular um, was make clear um, that connection between the police service and what's happening in our local areas from a whole um, array of, of different partners. So you'll see that um, the report is structured in, in two parts. Um, the first part uh, takes an overview, if you like, and uh, using the structure of standing together which members will be familiar with. We're reporting on um, progress at the Greater Manchester level around those three priorities, keeping people safe, reducing harm and offending, and strengthening um, communities. However, in the second part of the uh, report, which I think is actually designed much, much more attractively, um, we try to give a snapshot of some of the great work that's being done in each of our 10 districts to give a flavour and, and to, to really emphasise, you know, that, that approach that it's, this, this can't be done just by police or any organisation operating from a Greater Manchester level. It's got to come alive in our communities. It's got to make sense to our local people and it's got to be delivered largely by partnerships um, in the localities. And so that's what I really uh, wanted to try and convey. And then the, sec uh, the third element, which is uh, not yet complete, we've got to finish that off, is, is just to look forward a little way uh, in, in terms of the emerging challenges we're thinking uh, that we will be facing. So I hope, um, I hope that makes sense to you. I'm really keen to have any feedback you want to give because, as I say, we've still got an opportunity uh, to, to make some uh, minor revisions. And as I say, the design work, certainly for the front, which I thought was a little bit oppressive. Um, we will be changing a little bit. Thank you, Chair. OK, I'll open that up. Angela. Um, thank you. I just wanted to say, coming from like a community's perspective, the grant budget and grant and accountability, accountability section is very vague. It doesn't actually give anything specific. And I think... As someone from the community, I'd like to know a little bit more. Sorry. You know, the expenditure is just very vague. Employee-related, pensions, transport, that kind of thing. Yeah. Sorry, that, that okay, that, that, that is in the summary document of the plan itself, okay? What I'm talking about now is uh, papers that came, I think, just after the main uh, agenda items to you, which is a draft of our report on the progress towards the objectives in so that document. So this is not the final draft, then? This is not what's going to go out? It's not even the draft. It's a right, different great. document. Okay, then, that's good. <laughs> 
Andrew, just clarify, the two reports which we got handed out at the briefing before was the plan from last year that was published and agreed by, um, um, or published by Bev and, and, and agreed by here. What the item 12 is relating to is an update on some of the progress on that, on, on that plan and the way going forward. So, okay, yeah. thanks, Chair. Could I just say, though, that the information only came out on the 28th, which is Friday, and today's only Tuesday, and I just don't think it was enough time to get it together and to just go through it fully. Really. Yeah, and I think um, both Beth and, and Claire would be more than happy to receive comments back on that. I think it was to make sure we actually had the chance to see it before it was going out with the time of our meetings, which was um, obviously scheduled here for the Tuesday. So if we've got any feedback, we do, it's not limited to this meeting. If we get back stuff back by this time next week, the end of the week, this time next week, we can certainly take that into account. Um, David. As a first starter, uh, I think it's fine, but there's maybe just me. I'd like to see more examples of shared good practice which have, have led to successes. I think the public out there want to know what we achieved and what we've done. And it's fine to say in, in the way of the text we've got, but it doesn't recognise some of the successes we've had and some of the failures. So I think you've got to identify the failures and det also determine what you're going to do about those failures if they are. Um, there was some really uh, an excellent report which I received last week on Sulphur's one, which I, I would have liked to have seen in here as well. I, I, I think you know the one I'm talking about. Um, but generally, I think people can have a go at uh, making suggestions, and I welcome that opportunity. Any other comments before we bring? Yes, indeed. Um, it's just that I've looked through my emails and I can't find a copy of that report. Um, so I was just wondering, is it possible it could be circulated again? Because um, I just couldn't find a copy of it in any of the emails I've got. Thanks. We'll certainly ensure that um, that, that is resent sent to members. And again, we say um, if we can have any comments by this time next week, close the play next Tuesday, which gives us time to collect that information. I think the uh, so. Um, I think the point that David makes, I think having examples of good practice is useful. And I think it's how we could actually, we've, well, we've got very limited space for that. It's where we could actually, on any appendix, have links to some of the good practice that's taken place where reports have already been generated. Could be useful. I mean, I think the, the district profiles do give some examples of the great work you're doing uh, at the local level. And we'll see if we can uh, emphasise that more with examples in the body of the, of the report. Um, I just want to say, in the report itself, the, the cover report for the document, we talked, Dave, about a shared learning event in the autumn that we want to pull together where we bring the community safety partnerships, police, voluntary and community organisations together to really do that kind of best practice sharing, understanding what people are doing in, in one area, where something's going wrong in an area, exactly as you say, you know, has someone else got a suggestion? So we're going to be pulling that together from here in, into the autumn. We'll, we'll have an event. Any further comments at the moment? No. So what we're going to suggest is we ask Steve to resend it to, to all members of the panel. Um, so we've, we're very clear with that. And ask members if they've got any comments um, to be through to Claire or? Um, we'll, we'll have the details of who to send the details to. Yeah, we'll get the details of who to, to make those comments to by this time next week in the email from Steve. In doing that, we're happy to, well, I, I think it's, I acknowledge it's very helpful that you've actually brought that plan to us to actually show the update on it. Because, as you say, it looks like it's a two-year period, but last year we were actually launching the Sending Together plan, and it was that, it was that pulling, yeah. pulling that together. So now we're going on that yeah. right track for annual reports, Absolutely. which is, is, is always very helpful. Um, are people happy with the recommendations, so that caveat that we can still feed in? Yeah, thank you. Okay, moving on to item 4, 13 we've done. So item 14 is the date of future meetings. We've got three dates currently set in, in the diaries for the police and crime panel. I think as members we might have a discussion about how we're going to be working properly over this new, new municipal year. Um, so further dates could go in. And it's also how we coordinate that with the police and crime steering group, which is a separate meeting, but has a lot of similar people around the table. So we'll, we'll have a work on that one if people are happy. Going on to any other business, um, I know a few members last year attended the conference in Warwick on the ch for the chairs, members and, and officers of the police and crime panels. That's taking place again on Tuesday the 19th of 
um, November at the Warwick Conference Centre. If members are interested in attending, can they let myself and Steve know? And we'll get the details out with, the, with item 12, and then we can look at how many space we've got available and what, what the options are. We can discuss that, because that's obviously um, the week after the next meeting, so we can make a decision of that in the interim. Has anybody else got any other items of any other business? No. I want to thank everyone for attending today. Hopefully, I've got through it okay um, in, the, in the first meeting. Um, Kevin just, Kevin's here just at the end. <laughs> I got the note that you just walked to reception, so I thought I'd wrap the meeting up, Kevin. Oh. So, you know, you are more than, you are more than welcome. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to close the meeting for today. Thank everyone for attending. And I think we'll probably will be meeting before November, but we'll watch this space. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.